Hello, I'm Dan Milner. I'm a photographer who shot bike stories in some of the most remote and wildest places on the planet, from Ethiopia to Lebanon, Kyrgyzstan to North Korea. I use the bike as an excuse to travel, get out there and find things for myself, see new places, meet new people and ride new trails. And today I'm going to talk you through building up a brand new adventure bike. It's a Yeti SB5. It's a five inch travel carbon frame. It's light, it's resilient and strong. Its geometry gives me a helping hand on the climbs and it lets me pretty much tackle anything on the downhills with a good bit of confidence. Beautiful. This year I'm riding the Fox Factory 36 160 Travel Fork Up Front. It's the perfect match for the DPX2 rear shock. I've been riding Mavic wheels on my adventures for over a decade now, and this year I'm using the XA Pro wheel set. At 1600 grams, they're really portable, but they're incredibly strong and durable. For rubber, I'm riding the WTB Vigilante light but high grip up front and on the rear, a WTB Trail Boss with a tough sidewall. And I'll run that in either a fast rolling compound or a high grip, depending on the conditions that I expect to find. And when it comes to those moments when I'm actually going to propel myself, as opposed to carrying my bike up a ruddy big mountain, I choose this Shimano XT Componentry. It's fantastically strong, very, very durable, incredibly reliable, exactly what you need when you're out in the middle of nowhere, a long way from a bike shop. I'll run a 30 tooth chain ring up front and 11 to 46 on the back. Then for high altitude trips, when we're riding at silly altitudes like 5,000 meters or trying to, I'll add a 50 tooth one up sprocket to get that really, really low gear, save my knees. And when you're doing two weeks in the saddle in the back end of nowhere, there's a lot to be said for being comfortable. WTB Volt saddle. And for grips, I'm running the death grip from DMR that doesn't have a lock on on the outside end of your bars. That's important because when I'm sticking my bike on the roof of a taxi in Nepal or Morocco, then I haven't got a metal end of that bar to smash into windows and doors and your mate's bikes. And that sort of thing is quite important if you want to keep friends. I run a race face next 35 carbon bar. It's nice and light, really strong. I couple that with a race face turbine stem. That's a 50 mil stem, again, in a 35 diameter. So what about the other bits? I'm running a Chris King headset. Fit it, that's it, that will outlast me. For seat post, I'm running the Coriac dropper post from Shimano. And for pedals, I'm running the Crank Brothers Mallet. It's a pretty light pedal. Of course, you could go a little bit lighter with, say, the Candy, but I really like the security around the big platform. It lets me roll into things a little bit unclipped. An E13 bash guard, because a bent chain ring in the middle of nowhere does nobody any good. I already carry enough stuff on my back, so anything I can do to lighten that load is a bonus. So I use the one-up EDC tool. That's a tool that slots into the steerer tube of the bike. Really easy to get to when you need it. And the Backcountry Research big mother load strap that lets me strap inner tubes, energy bars, accessories onto the bike itself. Now of course when I'm carrying the bike that's all going on my back as well but when I'm pedaling that just lightens my backpack a bit. So there you go, those are the ingredients of the ultimate adventure bike. Let's put it together. 